A quote from Jehan Kartaltepe, Rochester Institute of Technology in New York. We had an idea of what galaxies would look like at these distances and how much detail we could see. But I think the reality far exceeds our imagination and really blows us away. Imagine looking into the cosmic nursery and seeing something there that shouldn't even exist. The James Webb Telescope has just discovered galaxies that break modern theories. We are now at the beginning of a new scientific era and nobody knows at the moment where this journey will go. Only one thing is certain. The latest findings are groundbreaking, staggering, and will change our understanding of the universe forever. The James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST for short, is a $15 billion technological marvel, exceeding the Hubble Telescope in range and sharpness of images by a wide margin. This telescope has been providing us with fantastic images of the, of the early universe, distant cosmic nebulae, menacing black holes, and planets in our own solar system since the summer of 2022. With 16 honeycomb-like mirrors and unique infrared technology, it's the most extraordinary telescope we humans have ever built. It sounds crazy, but this telescope was the hope of many thousands of astronomers on this Earth. They eagerly awaited its launch, knowing that the telescope's new capabilities would soon show them things they had dreamed of all their lives. They counted on the truth, on the confirmation of ideas that had long been only theories on paper. And then came the shock. The JWST did its job very well. After the telescope was safely placed in space, it pointed its mirrors for more than 72 hours at an area of the cosmos that appeared almost empty. However, this area appears empty only to us when we look up at the sky from Earth. James Webb catches the oldest light signals of the universe exactly here. Where no stars or nearby galaxies interfere in the foreground, the telescope can pick up light signals that have been traveling to us for 13.5 billion years or more. In this image, after extremely long exposure times, these oldest signals appear as blurry red specks of light. Orange light is already a bit closer to us, the yellow one even closer, and the well-recognizable blue or white light spots come from the nearest light sources. Almost all light signals on this photo are not at all from single stars. Here, we see predominantly the light of very old galaxies. These galaxies shake science. It will surprise you perhaps to learn that many scientists suddenly were not so happy about what they had longed for for so long. The results did not turn out the way they would have liked. Astronomers and cosmologists immediately set about analyzing this image. It was clear that this image would show us the oldest galaxies in the universe, but no one knew how old these galaxies would really be, how they were shaped, how dense they were, and what elements were in them. The shock hit home when, Shortly after the photo was published, Indian-American researcher Rohan Naidu found a galaxy that existed 300 million years after the Big Bang. And this was not to be the only find of this kind. Naidu and his team, as well as other international research groups, found one very old galaxy after the other. The reports overflowed, and soon it was clear. With the Big Bang theory and the past cosmological worldview, something could not be correct. Galaxies like these existed at a time at which there should have been just prototypes of stars. Who will find the answer to all the new questions? The magic of this discovery was that many dedicated young researchers felt encouraged to think differently, to keep searching for even older galaxies, and to believe possible what conservative research had long rejected. New theories are being put forward, and some old models of the universe that never received the attention they might have deserved are being revived. Our cosmos is just being scientifically reinvented, so to speak. So, the JWST disappointed only the expectations of those who hoped everything would remain the same. For those who thought already for a long time that the theory of the Big Bang is not so completely compatible with the realizations of modern quantum physics, the new realizations are a confirmation. They continue to search for the truth about the origin and the nature of our universe and do not rely only on theories. Actually, this development was foreseeable. One of Hubble's last great finds was the galaxy GNZ11, which existed at a redshift of 11.6, about 420 million years after the Big Bang. Already, this discovery made some scratch their heads to reason with old conceptions. But it was just a single case and had to be explained. 
The higher the redshift, the further back in time we observe a galaxy. Redshift describes how much the light of a galaxy was stretched as the universe expanded. The galaxies first discovered by Rohan Naidu and his team had a redshift of 13, meaning they existed about 300 million years after the Big Bang. Later, the discovery of more galaxies was announced, with redshifts as high as 20z. Conservative scientists defend themselves so far against these numbers and lead into the field that all these discoveries are provided with a large but because none of these redshifts were confirmed so far, and it's also not proven that they are actually galaxies. Nevertheless, the light is undeniably there, and it is clear that it must be old, very old in fact. If it was not emitted by galaxies, where did it come from? How is the age of galaxies determined? A common method to detect and determine very old objects in space is SMACS J0723, a gravitational lensing effect. Astronomers led by Xin Yan of the University of Missouri, Columbia, have used it to find 88 candidate galaxies beyond a redshift of 11. Yan's team thus also found the galaxy that has the incredible redshift value of 20z. These galaxies would be the most distant ever discovered if they can be confirmed. High redshift galaxies were discovered in two other studies in which JWST used only deep exposures without using gravitational lensing. These photos are part of the Cosmic Evolution Early Release Science, or SEERS, study. SEERS worked with evaluations from JWST's near-infrared camera as well as the NIRCAM findings. Additional data on the presumed galaxies were determined with JWST's near-infrared spectrograph, or the NIRSPEC, using other instruments such as the mid-infrared instrument or the MIRI camera. Astronomers at the University of Edinburgh used a similar approach to discover another galaxy candidate with a redshift of 16.7. That means this galaxy existed just 250 million years after the Big Bang. The team, led by graduate student Callum Donan, found five other galaxies with redshifts greater than 12. Another team, led by Stephen Finkelstein of the University of Texas at Austin, used the Sears method to discover a galaxy with a redshift of 14.3 placing it 280 million years after the Big Bang. This galaxy has since become known as Macy's Galaxy. Finkelstein promptly turned the discovery into a birthday present for his daughter, Macy. These galaxies are so far not confirmed because we cannot see clearly that they are really galaxies. Our technologies are not yet sufficient for that. The computers work with the light spectrum and analyze it. The computer assumes that the light was emitted by galaxies. Then, certain algorithms analyze the light spectrum and come up with fairly accurate values on size, density, mass, number of stars, and so on. However, this does not prove that this light was really emitted by galaxies. Ultra-supermassive black holes, which can also shine brightly under certain circumstances, are now also being discussed. If the computer gets the assumption that the light is black holes as a basis for its calculations, the results turn out differently. So, the weaknesses of the present technology lie in the determinability of what we really see there. But even if the light was emitted by black holes, we must ask ourselves how so gigantic black holes could have existed shortly after the Big Bang. The Big Bang could have existed anyway. All these distant galaxies show evidence of significant emission of ultraviolet light. This again provides evidence for the ionization of hydrogen gas which according to our previous cosmological models, should have ended the cosmic dark ages. During the dark age, there was no light in the young universe. Only when the first stars began to shine did the universe brighten. In their paper, the Edinburgh team calculated the ultraviolet luminosity of candidate galaxies between redshifts 8 and 15. The amount of ultraviolet light emitted by these galaxies at any given time is averaged using the measurement techniques presented earlier. Galaxies generally emit more ultraviolet light than young hot stars. Donin's team has concluded that there was actually more than enough ultraviolet radiation emitted by stars in these early galaxies to ionize the universe. This means that these newly discovered high redshift galaxies may well have existed on the cusp of becoming light in the cosmos. Unlike today's galaxies, which can host hundreds of billions of stars, these galaxies are most likely only a few thousand light-years across and contain only tens of millions of stars. 
According to the experts from Scotland, the newly discovered galaxies reflect generations of galaxies that were formed shortly after the first ones and are still in their infancy. The abundance of high redshift galaxies discovered by the JWST, as well as the amount of ultraviolet light shifted to the longer infrared wavelengths, further suggests that galaxies were more numerous in the early history of the universe than previously thought. This would be a completely new finding, but it does not necessarily overthrow the Big Bang theory. We would only have to correct our previous assumptions about the duration of the Dark Ages and the formation of the first stars and galaxies. According to Finkelstein's team, our cosmos was already shining brightly, with many small galaxies less than 300 million years after the Big Bang. We must add to these findings, however, that they are not the only ones in the field. Other researchers found very old galaxies in JWST's images that appear very large and massive. Their luminosity may have matched that of present-day galaxies. These researchers conclude that the first galaxies, if they were the first galaxies, must have been true star boosters. Possibly very many, very bright, and rather short-lived giant stars were formed in them. The existence of the early star giants was already proven computationally. However, researchers did not assume so far that these first large stars were already organized in galaxies. Astronomer Ren Seuss of the University of California, Santa Cruz, compared Hubble and Webb photographs of the same galaxies taken around cosmic noon. Most large galaxies appear to be significantly smaller in the infrared wavelengths measured by Webb than in the Hubble photos. According to Seuss, the Hubble studies revealed that galaxies start small and expand over time. However, the Webb results suggest that Hubble did not see everything, indicating that galaxy evolution may be more complex than previously thought. Click subscribe now and look forward to many more exciting videos.